Hey, hey, it's your favorite chairman. Probably not, though. I'm sure there's chairman you like better on, uh, on YouTube. Um, plus, I don't really have a following yet, so we'll see. But, uh, I just wanted to share some Christmas memories, some other random travel stories, and maybe a teeny bit of a rant about something, excuse me, sorry, something that's been in my craw a little bit over the last couple of weeks. Um, so, first Christmas memory is when I was, you know, younger, like, probably from age, like, 5 to 11, a lot, I would just kind of, you know, my wheelchair wouldn't come in the house a lot, I'd do a lot of army crawling, or like, uh, or, you know, people would just stick me in whatever a chair or couch or piece of furniture was nearby, you know, instead of lugging my wheelchair up steps. So, um, on Christmas, we would, um, we would get up early, open our presents, uh, that Santa left, and then we would, uh, go to my grandma Woods for, uh, at around 9 o'clock, 9.30 for breakfast, and then we'd head over to my grandma Hollihan's at around 1 o'clock, and then we would stop by their neighbors who, they were like an additional set of grandparents for us growing up until they... Finally had grandchildren of their own. And up until probably, actually the day that they moved, uh, Mr. Eugene, he, uh, we were talking about ice cream, and he gave me $20 for ice cream. And the the Christmas before that, I gave them a picture of me with Santa, like, you know, 34-year-old me or however old I was at the time. And they gave me a, a bucket of, um, of Christmas cookies. Um, and they probably won't see this. Uh, but, uh, because they literally just got the internet probably right a little bit after they moved, and, um, I don't know, they're still trying to figure it out years later, but, uh, but anywho, we, um, we, my mom was always in a rush, always behind, running late, you know, and we were kind of lived in a little bit of a hoarder house, so, you know, red ribbon was everywhere, wrapping paper was everywhere. And, uh, when we were coming back from, you know, the Christmas day, um, it, this was 88 or 87, I can't remember for sure, 1988 or 1987, um, my dad went to throw me on the couch, like, this little game that we kind of had where he would act like he was throwing me, and I would land, you know, on the couch, and, uh, a pair of scissors went in my back, like, not very far, because I had a heavy yellow coat on, but, uh, so my dad, like, immediately lifts me up because he sees me, uh, land weird. And he screams, oh my god, call 911, I stabbed him. So, um, so my mom, like, not realizing what had happened, uh, calls 911 and is like, uh, my husband just stabbed my disabled son. So within what seemed like three minutes... There were two rescue squads, two fire trucks, and two ambulances. And the first, then they had to climb over my newly constructed Pee Wee's Playhouse. It was like a, almost like a uh, unisex, almost like a dollhouse basically, but it had all the Pee Wee's Playhouse, uh, you know, characters in it. Um, and uh, I really liked it. I was a huge Pee Wee fan. Um, and, um, uh, so they have to climb all over that Christmas stuff that we just got. And uh, the first thing they say to me is, can you move your legs? And I'm like, uh, not real well, but that's not really related to this. And uh, then I'm trying to explain to you what happened. Oh, my dad threw me on the couch. He threw you on the couch? Had he been drinking? No, no, no. It's what he always does. And then <laughs> after they asked all those questions, when they got me to, I don't know, I was in... I guess I was probably in Fairfax Hospital, yeah. Then they got me to Fairfax Hospital. I, uh, my dad ended up helping them stitch me up because they were so short-staffed after thinking he was, you know, abusing me or whatever. Then, um, the next Christmas memory is, uh, when we moved here to the house I still live in right now currently, um, my, uh, my sister and I started this tradition. I don't know when it started, might have been the first year we moved here, might have been 1991, where we uh, would have this tradition for, 
probably like five or six years because my other sister is much younger than us where we try to get me in my chair and go look at the Christmas presents, you know, see what Santa brought or whatever. And uh, we try to get them in my chair and almost every time I would end up on the floor, boom, 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 on the floor. Like, and I would either army crawl if I wasn't dinged up or my dad would, you know, lift me from the floor and put me back in my chair and be annoyed that he had to be up there early. And, uh, but one year we got me in, we were so, so elated about it, and, you know, excited, and couldn't believe that we finally did that. And, um, some other, some other funny, like, travel-related stories that are not Christmas-related are, um, I, uh, I used to be a huge wrestling fan. Some people would argue I'm still a wrestling fan, I don't think I am anymore. I mean, it's it's a difficult habit to fully kick, but or fully spaz in my case, I guess. But uh, in 2004, I wanted to go to this wrestling show in Elizabeth, New Jersey. Uh, it was Ring of Honor, the anniversary of 9-11. It was going to be this big show with Mick Foley, a pretty famous wrestler, going to be on this, you know, relatively small independent show. And my grandfather and I went, and uh, we stayed at this hotel that didn't have room, didn't, no, didn't officially have a restaurant attached, but they recommended the uh, Don Shula Steakhouse, and uh, you could order food there, and if you, somebody could bring it over to you, kind of like room service. Well, we ended up eating there, and it wasn't that great. But when we got up to check out in the morning, there was like this older couple there, and they were complaining about that steakhouse you recommended. It was terrible. Like, the soup was cold, and the guy that brought the soup over when I told him it was cold, he stuck his finger in it and says, Feels warm to me. And then they're like, Oh, this steak isn't very good. And he's like, He starts eating himself and tastes fine to me. And then, um,. And then she's like, I tried to fill out the comment card, and he kept ribbing it up. So I, like, I filled one out, and I was going to walk it to the, uh, I was going to walk it to the place myself, but I couldn't get the manager to get off the phone, so I finally, like, forced the card in her hand, and she ripped it up and ate it. I'm like, we don't believe this ridiculousness. That lady, and they kept saying, ma'am, we just recommend you go there. We're not affiliated with them. And she they, she just complained and complained and complained until she ended up getting a free night. And then, um, another crazy thing that happened in New Jersey, and I've only been in New Jersey four times in my life, and three of the four times crazy things happened. So, um, in this trip, uh, me, it was me, my mom, a friend of my mom's, and my sister Bridget, and her boyfriend at the time, were going to Atlantic City for, I think, just a day and a half or whatever. Um, so, we we go to Atlantic City, we, we win some money, we lose some money, and, and we had a pretty good time. And we're coming back, you know, that morning, we're in a place called Thurfield, New Jersey, and all of a sudden we hear this clunking noise, and it's like, oh my god, what is that noise? And we assumed it was the muffler falling off, and so my mom pulls up the mile marker, and I'm like, I used to know area codes, like, off the top of my head, that, all that left my brain now, but I was like, um, dial 609-555-1212, and maybe they can get somebody out here to figure out what we're gonna do, because... You know, we, we're, like, way far away from my house at this point. Hours away. And so, they send out some Vida guys, and they don't exactly, they look down at it, and they're like, oh my god, the gas tank fell off your car. We've never even seen that. So, keep in mind, I have a wheelchair and a lift. A wheelchair lift. Like an old school metal Rikon, or whatever it's called, lift. So, and we're, you know, in lots of traffic on a, probably a Sunday, yeah, I think a Sunday, and uh, they're debating about what they're going to do, and at first, they're like, all right, we're going to tie, we're going to, like, get some straps, and we're going to tie this gas tank up, but you have to go to the nearest hotel, 
And it was called the Rainbow Room or something. And my mom didn't want to go to something called the Rainbow Room. She thought it sounded kind of fishy or whatever. And so they're like, all right, you got to go to the Best Western. And then they decided they didn't think that was safe. So then they're trying to figure out, all right, what are we going to do with the guy in the wheelchair? Like, we, we don't want them to drive it there. And, you know, anything could happen. It could blow up. You know, it could, who knows? So they, um, they decide they're going to... They get, like, a state trooper, and he stops traffic. They unload me out of the lift, drop it down on the road. They stretcher me out as if I was in a, um, you know, had been in that accident, basically. They put me in the back of the ambulance. But, what? like, they spend a good two or three minutes trying to figure out what they're going to do. So only one lane of traffic is blocked before that. I forgot the funniest part of this story, almost. So, I, uh, I was joking with the guys because they were trying to figure it out. I'm like, well, you guys figure it out. I'm going to light up a cigar. And they all start screaming. I don't think they knew I was joking. Um, and then, so, uh, so, yeah, there's that. And uh, it was just like, they said, we had somebody fix it and put another uh, piece on there. And had my uncle's shop look at it when we got back here. But they said they'd never heard of a gas tank falling off a car and assumed we must have lived in an area that had lots of salt and snow in order to create the rust that would have caused a gas tank to fall off a car because nobody, and I think at that time, yeah, around about that time, I think my uncle had been around cars, not directly working on cars, but around cars and various car problems. Um, for about 22 years at that point, and he had never heard of it, so it was, ins- it was like just ridiculous. And the other time, man, this is long, way longer than I thought. I thought it was going to be a short one, sorry. Um, is, uh, so, uh, the last time I was in New Jersey, different van, different lift, years later. It's this kind of weird concept of a lift. It had... This weird magnet that you would like slide up across one of the van lights, and these motors would activate, and the doors would open slowly, and then the lift would slowly come out out and do its thing. Well, something happened to the motors, and they were burning, and they had to be taken off. But if you take the motors off, the doors won't shut and lock. So we had to drive from. New Jersey to um, to outside of D.C. where I live, basically. And uh, with, like, belts and bungee cord and duct tape, like, trying to keep the door shut. And it's like, if any of us have to be, good luck, because you're not getting back in here, especially you. And so it was just crazy that every time we go to New Jersey, something really wacky seems to happen. I didn't mean for this to be 13 minutes, and I really wanted to do another, like, holiday-related thing, so... I don't know. Maybe I'll do another one of these tomorrow. Maybe I'll do it later today and just backpost it. I'll see what kind of interest level I have, um, because it's a rant I really want to go on, but I'm already at 15 minutes, and since I don't edit or have a plan ever... Um, I don't want these to be much, this is almost too long. Anyway, happy holidays and all that good stuff. Um, I hope you're, somebody's enjoying this. And I will talk to you later, everybody.